Hi everyone, it's Professor Dingman here, and today I'm going to guide you through some sample sections of the serial essay that you're working on. Um, so you'll see down here in the drafting materials section of the essay 2 module, I have um, whole student samples and then I have some partials, partial student samples that are annotated. We're going to take a look at those today. So if you open up the sample intro and conclusion, um, let's look through this together. Okay, so just to refresh your memory, um, introductions, the way I teach them is that they have four parts, the hook, the elaboration, the bridge, and the thesis. I covered this back in the essay one module on the parts of an essay page. You can also find the parts of an essay located in the writing resources module. So if you're still a little unsure about introductions, pause this video and go review introductions from the parts of an essay page. Okay, so hook, elaboration, bridge, and thesis are the four parts of an introduction. You'll see I color-coded this introduction so that you can see how those four parts are working together. Okay, so let's start up here at the top. So this essay reads, the National Registry of Exonerations has aimed to give details about every exoneration in the U.S. since 1989. 2,285 exonerations, which totals 20,265 years people have lost because they were serving sentences for crimes they did not commit. The National Registry of Exonerations. Exoneration cases or potential exoneration cases have been getting more and more attention over the last few years with the rise of social media, Netflix, and podcasts, pulling in people from all over the world. One such case is the murder of Hey Min Lee, which was the subject of the most successful podcast in the platform's history, Serial. In the first season of the podcast Serial, journalist Sarah Kenning lays out details of the case. In 1999, a teenager named Heyman Lee was found strangled to death and buried in a shallow grave in Baltimore, Maryland. The person convicted of her murder was her ex-boyfriend, Adnan Syed. However, the prosecution had no hard evidence against Adnan except for the ever-changing testimony of an acquaintance of both Hay and Adnan. Even with a lack of evidence, the jury found Adnan guilty and he has been in prison since his initial arrest. The jury, police, and judge all believed the prosecution had enough evidence to render a guilty verdict. But did they? While the prosecution heavily relied on the testimony of his alleged accomplice, Jay, this testimony was poor evidence, as Jay was lying and thus unreliable, unlike Asia McLean. Furthermore, the prosecution used other unreliable witness testimonies, racial bias, fear of Islam, and poor cell phone data, and therefore did not have sufficient evidence to convict Adnan Syed of first-degree murder. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, so... You can see just by my color coding that there are the four main parts of an introduction present. Okay, we have the hook and notice my note here. I like this hook. I think it's a great hook. They're using statistical information from the National Registry of Exonerations. They have it cited here. I would expect to see it in their works cited page two. Okay, anytime you grab statistics or factual information or quotes, you have to look up where you're getting that information from, and you have to properly cite it on your work cited page. Okay, so exoneration cases or potential exoneration cases um, have been getting more and more attention over the last few years with the rise of social media, Netflix, et cetera, et cetera. So this is them then elaborating on that initial statement that they make in the hook, right? The hook is pretty grabby. Um, it's giving us hard facts and hard numbers that there are over 2000 people that have been proven to have been convicted for crimes they did not commit. That's pretty striking. Um, and then in this elaboration, they kind of tie that exoneration information over to the podcast, right? And we can see them introduce the podcast here. Um, and the murder of Heyman Lee. And they mentioned the title of the podcast and the creator, right, or journalist in charge, Sarah. So we're getting that tag, title, author, genre is present here. Um, they're giving us a little bit of background, right? It's just a real quick summary of what the podcast is about. 
Um, I really like their bridge, this transition here. Okay, so remember a bridge transitions the background information to the thesis. And what they did here very cleverly is um, give us the outcome and then question it, right? The jury, police, and judge all believe the prosecution had enough evidence to render a guilty verdict. But did they, right? And I like the way they use the question because then what they do is they use their thesis to answer that question. Very clever. Um, and the thesis is clear, it's strong, it makes a claim about whether or not the prosecution did or did not have sufficient evidence. It says right there, did not have sufficient evidence, okay? Um, and they're listing out their arguments. So while the prosecution relied heavily on, or heavily relied on the testimony of his alleged accomplice, Jay, this testimony was poor evidence as Jay was lying and thus unreliable, point one. Unlike Asia McLean, point two. Furthermore, the prosecution used other unreliable witnesses, point three. Racial bias, point four. Fear of Islam, point five. And poor cell phone data, point six. Now I would actually say that that is too much. And for this person, I would advise them to cut it down and probably combine these two, racial bias and fear of Islam, into something that you would call maybe um, bias of his heritage, uh, bias of his culture. That way you can talk about the racial bias and the Islamophobia or fear of Islam in the same paragraph. If you list them out separately like this, then they need to have their own separate paragraphs. Keep in mind that the thesis is also your map. So the order that items appear in the thesis is the order they should appear in your essay, meaning J would be first, then Asia, then the unreliable witnesses, then the bias stuff, and then the poor cell phone data please follow the order of your thesis. Okay, so we have topic, claim, evidence, all listed out. This is a clear, excellent thesis. Okay, so now let's take a look at one of the body paragraphs, okay? So, let's zoom in here. Okay. So the strongest piece of evidence the state's prosecution brought was Jay's testimony. However, Jay's testimony is not a credible piece of evidence to convict Syed because of the lies and inconsistencies of Jay's testimony. Okay, so um, you'll see my comment out here is that um, this topic sentence is kind of addressing the opposition, but not enough. Remember, we're trying to do kind of an I say, they say, they say, I say, where you are addressing the opposition, right? What are they, what claim are they trying to make? What claim are you making? Why is your claim better? Um, so I do, I did come up with what I think would make a stronger topic sentence right here in my comment. The strongest piece of evidence the state prosecution brought was Jay's testimony. However, Jay's testimony is not a credible piece of evidence to convict Syed because of the lies and inconsistencies of Jay's testimonies. I think that makes it clear, okay? And then you can see here it continues. The prosecution tried to present Jay as a credible witness who, although he told lies, is generally honest about the murder and his own involvement and should be considered reliable. However, the prosecution is wrong as evidenced by the number of recorded inconsistencies in the taped interviews with police at trial and in subsequent interviews and conversations with other people. I think these would make uh, stronger sentences to start off this paragraph and then you would get into laying out the specific evidence as opposed to this topic sentence. Like I said, it does sort of address the opposition, but I think this is a much, much stronger way of addressing the opposition as I modeled for you out here in the margin. Okay, so let's get into the actual argument though, because now they're trying to prove, nope, we can't take Jay seriously. His testimony should not be considered credible and therefore the prosecution did not have enough evidence to convict the non because this testimony is garbage. Okay, so Kennig admits that out of all the people and details involved in this case, Jay is the most troubling because of his lies, saying, quote, and Jay also tells this story at trial, not once, but twice, because the first proceeding ended in a mistrial. So at least, say, six times he's told what happened. And each time, some details shift. Some of the discrepancies seem small to me and understandable, but some are significant and confounding. 
end quote. And you'll see proper citation here, the way I told you guys to cite serial. With the title of the podcast, Serial, italicized, that's the slant writing, and the page number where you found the quote in the transcripts. And please remember, the transcripts are searchable. Open up those transcripts, hit Control F on your keyboard, it'll pull up a search box, and you can search for any word or phrase in the podcast transcripts, and it'll take you directly to that word or phrase and show you how many times that word or phrase appears in the transcripts and which pages you can find them on. So you'll need to quote directly from the transcripts, so make sure you're doing this. Okay, so we see here that they're introducing that even the host of the show admits that Jay is disturbing and that he is inaccurate. Um, and they're pointing out that um, he is right here, right? Some are insignificant, small, insignificant lies. And some are, like she says, confounding, confusing. As Kenning shows, Jay lies, misleads, or seems unsure about details surrounding Hayes' murder and burial, even when the details seem small. Okay, so I like that he's setting this up, right? So he's going to say here, Jay lies about small things, Jay lies about big things. We can see where this is going. For example, and now we're getting into example, right? Look at the language. It's a, ling it's a transitional expression that indicates to the reader we're about to get an example from the text. One of Jay's first inconsistencies was about where Jay and Adnan went on the morning of January 13th, 1999. During the first taped interview, Jay says he and Adnan went to Westview Mall, but in the second taped interview, he says they went to Security Square Mall. This inaccuracy may seem insignificant, and it may be that Jay was honestly confused or not remembering correctly. But as Kenig points out, many of Jay's inconsistencies are on crucial points. One of these major points, okay, so we're gonna pause here. All right, so um, they're making sure they're bringing up a point about um, what Jay's lying about, right? Um, and so we see this first thing is kind of inconsequential, right? First, he says they went to Westview, then Security Square. And doesn't seem like it's that big of a lie, and it can be written off that maybe he just totally didn't remember, right? It's kind of could seem realistic and probable that he wouldn't remember the name of them all. Um, so that one's kind of one where you're like, okay, maybe one small lie. Um, but it's not just the small things. And that's what this essay is pointing out. Right here is where they transition. Okay. One of these major points is Hayes' burial. At first, Jay maintains that he refused to help Adnan bury Hayes' body. And then two weeks later, he changes his story and says they both dug the grave. This is a major problem. Okay, so I like this here. This is showing some analysis, right? They're not just regurgitating information from the podcast. They're making an argument about the information in the podcast, right? They're making a claim. This is a major problem. And um, essentially, this is kind of a rhetorical question. Why would Jay lie about this? Could he be confused? Helping to bury a body doesn't seem like an event a person would forget or confuse with another experience. So I like that they're um, calling into question Jay's inconsistencies and questioning, is it really easy to forget what you were doing with a dead body? Some may claim that perhaps Jay is remembering what Dr. Elizabeth Loftus would call a false memory. In Erica Hayasaki's article, How Many of Your Memories Are False, she writes, quote, Loftus has found that memories can be planted in someone's mind if they are exposed to misinformation after an event or if they are asked suggestive questions about the past, end quote. Okay, so I like that they're bringing in another article. Remember, you have to choose two of the articles that I had you read to use in this essay to help support your claims, to help uh, formulate your argument. So you can see what they're doing here, right, is they're addressing the opposition. Okay, so maybe is it that Jay is misremembering and he brings in the Erica Hayasaki and the expert Elizabeth Loftus, um, and then they comment on that. Did he help or didn't he? It seems like neither the detectives, nor attorneys, nor Kenig could ever really find out the truth there. If Jay is willing to lie about burying a body, he could be lying about other aspects of the case. Okay, so this here too, you'll see, I call this, um, right, this is the commentary sections. These pink sections are the commentary. Um, this blue section is the evidence from the text. And you'll see they're doing some commentary. There could be a bit more argument, right? Um, 
like what else did the Hayasaki article say about this? Is it that they could just be um, suggestive or have the memories planted or isn't it true that also some people do have accurate recall even of traumatic events? Okay, uh, something to note here, the, this, pair, this section continues to talk about J, but what they did, you'll see my note here, it says split the section into two or more paragraphs. It's too big for one paragraph and that is what they did. I am advising all of you who are using J in your essay, split your J section into two paragraphs. If you're writing about J, that section better be detailed because there's a lot there and it needs to be split up into two paragraphs so that your reader is not overwhelmed. Okay, so they're moving, continuing on with their J argument. Another huge inconsistency J is, tells is regarding when Adnan tells J he is planning to kill Hay. First, J says Adnan told him on the morning of the murder. Then he changes the story to say that Adnan started talking about the murder four to five days before January 13th. J also claims Adnan asked for J's help the night before the murder, after which J calls Jen to tell her of this plot. However, that story changes too. At trial, Jay goes back to the first version of his story in which Adnan tells him about the plan on the day of the crime and that he didn't take Adnan seriously. And you'll note in this whole summary section where they're giving us all the different times that the lie changed, they're citing the podcast and the page range where they're getting those details. So even for information that's not a direct quotation, if you're getting that info from the podcast, make sure you're citing it. Now here comes the commentary, right? and the argument that they're making about that piece of evidence that they're pulling from the, from the transcripts. These details are absolutely essential to have correct because it makes all the difference to how the court can sentence Adnan, as it makes the difference between the crime being premeditated or not. To say that Adnan planned Hay's death days in advance makes him seem like a sadistic manipulative murder, and the other version makes it seem like he did this spur of the moment because he was jilted. This major change should have alerted the detectives, the prosecution, and the jury that Jerry's narrative cannot be trusted. Okay, so they're arguing, right? Here they are making their argument that if um, he's able to lie and go back on these points, which is very crucial, um, that he's not trustworthy and that this is absolutely impacting how Adnan is to be sentenced, right? Because it determines if it's first degree, second degree, there's different variations among how we label murders. And that impacts the types of sentences the judges dole out to, to the convicted people. Okay, so now we see another, so we have a transition moving into another uh, piece of evidence. Another serious discrepancy is the location of the trunk pop, where Adnan allegedly pops open the trunk of Hay's car to show Jay her dead body inside. First, Jay says that Don called him at 345 to pick him up from a location on Edmondson Avenue, and it is there where he shows the body. However, he changes the story to say that Adnan called him from Best Buy, and it is in the Best Buy parking lot where Adnan shows Jay Hay's body. Okay, now here comes the commentary, and um, right here they're missing a citation for that information, so I would suggest here to cite. This is another place where they should cite the source. I'm going to put that note there. Citation needed. Um, but here comes the commentary. Okay, again, like the burial, it seems unbelievable that a person would forget where they saw a murderer reveal a dead body. Not only that, but the locations are so different, and Jay's testimony is that Best Buy is the location where Adnan committed the crime. It does not make sense that someone would confuse a murder location with a dis with a di should be distinct with a distinct environment. Um, Best Buy parking lot with a location that is not close by and is a completely different environment. Looking closely at Jay's testimony, it becomes clear that Jay is lying, confused, or misremembering. But with so many of these inconsistencies coming from the only witness, and with this witness being the center of the prosecution's case, Adnan should not have been convicted. Okay, so again, this is them putting forward their argument and pointing out that this just does not add up. Jay should not be confusing two different locations that have two very different environments and that he should be able to remember where he was when he saw a dead body because that's kind of a big detail that you think would 
cement in people's memory. Um, what I also like about this part of the of the paragraph or this part of the section is that um, he's going back to the claim, the topic sentence claim and the thesis point, right? Looking closely at Jay's testimony it becomes clear that he's lying, uh, confused or misremembering so on and so on. Therefore, Ednan should not have been convicted. He restates his claim. In an argumentative essay like this, where you're taking a position and you're making these kinds of back and forth arguments, this is a good way to end uh, each section of your essay is by reiterating that claim you're trying to make. Okay, so that's what a detailed body section of this essay looks like, okay? Is you have clear topic sentences, that are making claims that come straight out of your thesis statement. You're addressing the opposition, okay? Um, and you're addressing the opposition thoroughly and that you're using specific evidence from the text and citing the text, right? Quoting from the transcripts. And that you're also using at least two of the articles that we read. Now you don't have to use the articles in every single paragraph, but you need to use them like I said, eat two articles at some point in your essay. Okay, and if you also have looked outside and found other research, feel free to use that, but you will need to look up how to cite this. Okay, so now let's move on to the conclusion. The rest of your body paragraphs should follow this same format. Um, so let's take a look at what a conclusion is supposed to be for this essay. All right, so a conclusion, let's just recap, refresh our memory. What are conclusions supposed to look like or what are they supposed to have in them? They have two parts, right? The first part is your thesis, which restates your um, original thesis. You just wanna reword it. Please don't just copy and paste your thesis from the intro. Look at your thesis and rephrase it for the conclusion. Don't change it. Uh, the ideas, but change the wording. Okay, and then the second thing that you do is you address the significance, the so what, why should we care? Why does this matter? Why is this significant to the audience? Uh, and you'll see here, I color coded this also. Um, the yellow part address is the so what, why should we care? Why does this matter? Why is this stuff significant? And the blue part is the restatement of the thesis statement. So, sadly, there may never be a resolution to the question of who murdered Haman Lee, but that does not mean that Adnan Syed should remain in prison because he is the closest thing to catching the actual murderer. The U.S. criminal justice system does not work that way, nor should it. Okay, so this is a strong start to the conclusion. Um, they're trying to pull us in to back to the significance. Why does this matter? Why should we care? Uh, next, they're going to transition into restating their thesis. All in all, the prosecution did not have enough evidence to convict Don. Jay is proven to be a liar and or confused about major details of the case. The prosecution's other witnesses were also weak, and the prosecution relied on bias of Adnan's Pakistani heritage and religion, and they used inaccurate cell phone data. Examining each of those key pieces of evidence, it is plain to see reasonable doubt. All right, so excellent restatement of the thesis and I can go back up to the top and see that this is not just the thesis statement copied and pasted but restated new words and then they go back to the significance part um, and I like that they uh, uh, start off with a, a rhetorical question here or not even actual rhetorical question just a, a straight question is it non innocent we don't know but that is not what our court system seeks to establish in criminal cases. Our courts determine if a person is guilty or not guilty of a crime. I guess I should say of a crime. A non Syed should have been given a verdict of not guilty instead of a life sentence to prison. In Non's case and the whole first season of Serial matter because they show that there are major flaws in our criminal justice system and that we have been wrongfully convicting people because of these laws. While programs like Serial and Making a Murderer have done well in shedding light on these issues, it is important to remember these cases are not dramas played out for our amusement, but actual cases with actual human lives at stake. Don't the wrongfully accused deserve justice as much as victims? Aren't wrongfully convicted people victims also? Okay, so what you can see here is them bringing the, the paper to a close. And I like the rhetorical questions that they're asking here at the end. These are rhetorical questions. Um, and 
they don't feel overused. I do say be mindful when you're asking questions that you don't overdo it. And they do have three questions in this conclusion, but I think all three of them are, are effective and well-placed. Um, these last two questions are used to make the audience think, right? Uh, and that's kind of the goal of a conclusion is to have your audience walk away thinking, man, that was interesting. That was important. I should do something or I want to find out more or I agree with this person. Um, and these two these two questions at the, at the end, I think they're really good questions worth asking. Um, so I really like the way he brought the paper to a close with with the rhetorical questions there. Um, so overall, the, these are the, the the way your paragraph should be looking, the, the samples that I just showed you. OK, the intro, the conclusion and then the sample body paragraph section on J. You should use these as your guides. Uh, OK, if you have any questions, concerns, um, feel free to text me or email me. And also don't forget uh, about our embedded tutor. You can also reach out to our embedded tutor if you have any questions or concerns about any of these assignments or um, making sure that you're um, doing what you're supposed to be doing on these assignments. Okay, guys, talk to you soon.